Hello and welcome to a first look at creating calculations in Excel. Before we get into creating the calculations I just want to show you a few of the important keys on the keyboard. And those keys are the equal and plus key, the subtraction key, the multiply key and the divide key. That's on the main keyboard. Over on the right if you have a standard keyboard you'll find the number keypad and you'll find the division symbol, multiply symbol, subtract symbol and addition symbol all positioned around the top right edge of that number keypad. Bear in mind that with the multiply symbol and the plus symbol on the main keyboard you need to use the shift key to get those characters. Okay so with that covered we'll, we'll go on and begin to create our first calculations. I've set up a little spreadsheet here and this is formatted in such a way to show the different symbols for division, multiplication, addition and subtraction. And you'll see we have a set of very simple calculations involving the number 10. So let's get started here then. I already have F1 highlighted which is where I want the result to appear. Now if I press the equals key you will see that it adds a couple of characters there, a tick and a cross. The cross is to cancel the formula entry and the tick is to accept it. The, um, basically they perform the same function as the escape key for cancel and the enter key for accept. So now I've pressed the equals key I can go on and start building my calculation. And the first thing I need to do is click on the first number I want to include and that's going to be this cell here, C1. So I simply click on it. And as you can see that value or the cell reference, more importantly, goes into the cell. It's a division calculation, so I'm now on the keyboard, I'm going to press the divide symbol and then finally click on the second value that I want to include in my calculation, which is the value in E1. So we see there, Excel has built up the formula for me, equals C1 divided by E1. And you'll notice it colour codes the cell entries as I select them. Now I'm going to use that little tick this time to accept the entry, so click on the tick and it puts the number one in there and in the formula bar you will see the formula that we've just created or the calculation we've created so the critical thing here is that we've used cell references rather than numbers so on the screen we see the result of the calculation the formula bar shows the calculation behind that result so let's move on and do the other calculation then so I'm going to click into cell F2 now and so it's equals on the keyboard, click on the value contained in cell C2, so put C2 in the formula, press the star sign on the multiply symbol on the keyboard, and then click on the second value, click on that little tick to accept, and we get the correct result 100. So moving down then to F3, so it's equals again on the keyboard, click the first value, this time it's the plus symbol on the keyboard, second value and this time I'll press the enter key and we get the result 20 and finally equals on the keyboard with the subtraction, click on the first value, subtraction symbol on the keyboard, second value in cell E4 there, press the enter key again and we get 0. 10 minus 10 is indeed 0. The reason that we use the cell reference is that if any of these calculations now changes or any of the original values changes the result will also change. So if I change this cell in E4 to say 5 instead of 10 so I'll just type 5 press enter you'll see the calculation updates automatically to change the result. Now we could do the same thing in the next one above so if I change that to 50 instead of 10 we get the answer 60 and if we change the second 10 in the multiplication to an 8, we should get 80, which we do. And if we say 75 divided by 10, we get the result 7.5. And that's the fundamental thing to understand about spreadsheets is that when you create those calculations, and if I just click on any one of those formulas again, this is why we use cell references as opposed to numbers. We can use numbers instead of self-references, but it won't work correctly. So if I just delete that calculation out of F1, and we recreate it, so equals on the keyboard, and this time I'm going to type in the numbers. So I'm going to type 75 divided by 10, 
press the enter key and we get the same result that's great but how about if we now change this value in C1 so somebody comes along and changes that to 50 well clearly that's a problem so 50 divided by 10 isn't 7.5 so let's just fix that by again deleting equals on the keyboard click the value in the cell divide on the keyboard click the value in the second cell press enter and we now have the correct result so let's go on and look at some more examples here we have another set of examples as you can see our first one is an addition so here we have some petty cash receipts and we're going to work out the total first of all so click in the cell where the total needs to go this is cell B8 press the equals key to begin the calculation and I can click on the first item press the plus key click on the second item press the plus key again and click on the third value so that's gathered all the items together in a formula equals B4 plus B5 plus B6 in other words 3 plus 16 plus 22 let's click on a little tick there and we get the result 41 and again the nice thing about any Excel calculation that's linked to data is that if we have a problem with one of our original numbers let's say paper clips goes up to 6 you will see that the result automatically updates to 44 okay so moving along then to subtraction again click in the cell where the result needs to go and this time we have a uh, calculation that needs the discount taking off the original price so again equals on the keyboard click on the original price minus on the keyboard click on the discount value this time I'll just press the enter key and you can see the result there if I just move back to the cell remember you can always check in the formula bar to see the actual calculation behind the result so moving along to the multiplication example you're probably getting the hang of it by now so equals to begin click on the quantity in this case press the multiply key on the keyboard the star sign click on the price per unit and then again just press the enter key now we get 391.6 as the result come along to the final example and this is a division calculation so again click the cell we want the result to appear in equals on the keyboard click on the prize money value in this case divide on the keyboard the forward slash key click on the number of lottery winners in this case eight press the enter key and we see that each person will be receiving 625 whatever's dollars pounds it doesn't really matter so there are four examples an addition subtraction a multiplication and a division calculation and how you create those formulas those calculations in Excel so now we've seen how to create these basic calculations let's go back to our original spreadsheet and create the calculations for that example so here we are back in our example spreadsheet that we'll be building throughout this course and we now need to apply some calculations here so I'm going to click into the first cell underneath the income label that's into cell D3 and press the equals key on the keyboard and we'll work out the calculation that we need to do and it's a simple multiplication so I'm going to click on the value in the rental price column press multiply on the keyboard click on the value in the rentals column and that is the calculation that equals B3 multiplied by C3 press the enter key and that gives us 9.75 9.75 as the result so I'll do that calculation one more time equals on the keyboard click on the price multiply on the keyboard click on the rental quantity and this time I'll click on the little tick up there which is a very similar action to pressing the enter key and you'll see we get the result in the cell and again remembering the formula bar you will see the actual calculation behind the result and again notice that we're using cell references in the calculation not the numbers and the reason for that as you now know is that if any of those numbers update if we need to change the rental price or the quantity updates the calculation result will automatically update as well so I can illustrate that fairly simply if I simply change the 
rental value for Ben here from 9 to 10 you'll see the income update to 25 from 22.5 now creating these calculations one by one is a bit tedious especially if you have a long list of calculations to create but what I'm going to do here is select both of these calculations actually click and drag down and press delete and then come back to the cell for the first calculation and what I'm going to do here is show you how in actuality you would create your list of calculations one thing to bear in mind for Excel is that in virtually all circumstances you only ever need to create one calculation and then you can copy that down or copy that across to fill in the remaining cells so for instance here I have to fill in calculations for cells from D3 down to D9 but I only need to create a calculation in cell D3 and we'll show you that right now so equals on the keyboard click on my rental price multiply on the keyboard click on rental quantity and now I'm going to click on the tick to accept it and then put the mouse pointer at the bottom right of the cell and I get the black cross and then I can click and drag down and that will drag that formula now I know nothing appears to be happening at the moment there's a sort of a grey outline as soon as I release the mouse button Excel automatically places the calculation into each of those cells for me the important thing to notice here is that if I come back to the first cell D3 look in the formula where it says B3 times C3 press the down arrow key and comes to the next row it says B4 times C4 and again and move down B5 times C5 so you'll see what's happening is that as the formula copies down Excel updates for the relevant row which is good this is what we want to have happen it wouldn't be very good if it simply copied the row 3 formula to every other row because we would obviously have the same results in every cell so Excel cleverly updates the formula depending on whether we move down rows or across cells when you move down rows Excel up updates the row number so in this case it goes B5, B6, B7 etc so as I continue down here you can see the cell references have updated correctly so the calculation does apply to the relevant row of information now there is one final trick I'll show you here if I select all the cells below D3 so D4 to D9 delete on the keyboard click into that cell D3 again and I'll show you a much quicker way of filling in the remaining cells so created my first calculation again put the mouse pointer at the bottom right of that cell this time double click and when you double click Excel automatically runs the formula all the way down the column until it finds a blank row and then it stops so it doesn't go zooming off into the distance and that's a nice quick way of creating formulas for your spreadsheets okay I'll just click away there to deselect and I'll save by simply clicking the save button there and that will overwrite the previous version that concludes this first look at Excel calculations and in the next tutorial we're going to start looking at functions so thank you for watching this hope you found something useful in there and see you next time